Hello, and welcome to the Brand Therapist Podcast. I'm your host, Yamilka Rodriguez, and today we have a really fun episode ready, all ready for you to figure out how to create or really fully explore your personal brand. So I thought we'd get into some tactics and really look at what it takes to have a complete personal brand, and how that's going to help you in your business. So really, a personal brand is like being a thought leader. That's why we talk so much about fame and how fame is really about having an impact in the world. And so we will talk more about fame in the next episode, but today we're going to focus on what you need to have a personal brand. Okay, so I always tell my clients that it's really important to think about the brand as a brand ecosystem, okay? And I think I've talked about this before. So the brand ecosystem is not about cloning your assets, which can be your logo, you know, the things that you use on your brand, It's not about cloning them and making them exactly the same across all the channels. It's really about them integrating and coming together. So they, so people know it's your brand, but they're not clones of each other. So I always like to look at the brand ecosystem in four pillars. So the pillars are strategy, brand ethos photography, and messaging. So the first one of those, if you think about the strategy, nothing can be done without a strategy. And what is a strategy? You know, a lot of people think, well, that's a big word, or do I really have to pay for strategy? The strategy sets the foundation. It sets everything to be able to be executed. You have to have a plan. A strategy is really thinking about what's your plan? How are you going to execute this plan? And what do you need to execute this plan? You know, the strategy for me in particular is really understanding your mission, vision, and values, your brand character, your brand positioning, and your super fan profile. With those four things, you can execute anything. Okay, so let's look at mission, vision, and values. So if you really look at those, you have to have a vision of where you're going. What's your lighthouse, right? The mission are more tactics. And uh, you can have many missions, but one vision. And then the values can just be those words that mean a lot to you. So I don't know if you remember, I have them right here. If you look at um, one of the um, brand character cards on the back, it shows words. And I always ask my guests to tell me what those words mean, because those are what I call the value words. And so if you define those words for yourself, right, you'll still be very unique and different because what, let's say one of your values is, uh, let's look at this one. Let's say it's playful, right? You want a company, you always want to be playful. It's not about being serious, right? So think about the opposite of playful. And then how do you define that word? for you, which may be a different definition for somebody else, right? Okay, so that's really important. That's part of the strategy. The second part is your brand character. It's really important to understand your brand character because the more you focus on that character, the more you attract the right individuals into your brand. We think that when we do a comp- when we start a business we believe that we have to attract 
everybody in the world. Well, that's not true. Because if you try to attract everybody in the world, you'll turn into vanilla or oatmeal, right? Something very generic. And what we want to create with a brand personality is something very specific, very, very specific to you, right? The more you can show your authenticity to the world, the more you're going to be able to attract those people who love your brand. I'm sure you've seen a lot of people um, that you admire, right? Um, And you're probably like, I really like her personality because these people are really showing up in a very particular way. And so that is how you need to show up. Now, a lot of times, and I've seen a lot of my clients do this over and over again, is that they unconsciously create this brand character. But the important thing, and this is what psychology teaches us, is to turn the unconscious to the conscious. And that's what makes us more aware of what we do and what we are. So once you understand your brand character, you can fully, fully bring to life your authenticity because you're focusing on that essence, that core. Now, the next piece of that is your brand positioning. So what is brand positioning? Well, brand positioning is really brand differentiation. What's your differentiation? What's your unique stand? What do you stand for? And how do you show up like that every single time? So brand positioning is really understanding what is your positioning and also understanding the opposite of that positioning. So we look at a framework that um, I've developed and we look at that framework and we look and see how where you're positioned. There's four positioning strategies And we also look at that opposite because that opposite is what's going to bring tension. And we really want tension in our brand. And there's a very specific way to do that. And the last piece is super fan. So what is a super fan? I call them super fans. Other people call them avatars, ideal clients. But what is that person that loves everything that you do? And the only way that you can attract that person is really going into your authentic brand essence. But you need to understand them too, because it's all about having empathy for your client and really knowing what they want and really using your listening skills and giving them what they need so they can become your super fan. Because that's what keeps this relationship going. And the more that we understand our super fan, the more that we're going to have an amazing business. So you have to really create this profile and understand everything about them. What's their name? Where do they live? A specific age? Where do they shop? You know, what car do they drive? Where do they hang out? What's their favorite book? What channels are they watching? What shows are they watching? Are they watching drama shows or are they more comedy or romantic? Like really get to know your ideal client deeply and create this profile and visualize the profile. So those are the four elements that we need in the pillar of strategy. And again, Vision, mission, values, right? Brand character. We have brand positioning. And we have the super fan profile. Okay, now let's go on to the next next pillar. The next pillar is what I call the brand ethos. That's where we start to execute on your brand. So what does that mean? Your brand is not your logo. Your brand encompasses much more than that. And if you look at the book, The Brand Therapist, 
you're going to get to understand what it means to have a brand. I call the five senses framework because we need to look at this as an experience for our customers. So how do we think through our brand through the five senses? Yes, visual is one of the five senses, but it's not the only one. So if you think really about your brand ESOs, we execute brand guidelines. And why do you need brand guidelines? Well, brand guidelines kind of hold your secret sauce, your particular makeup. And so you might have certain things in there, your color, how you want your logo to be, how you execute on these things. And that's going to be needed to build your other parts of your assets. So your brand guidelines holds your entire brand look and feel. And then we go into logo. So what is your logo particularly like? When we talk about personal brands, a lot of times our logos are our name, but not necessarily. It can be the business name, but it has to reflect your personality. And that's why it's so important to start with strategy. Once you really understand who you are, then you can execute on the brand guidelines, on the logo. And then the next piece is the templates. We look at all the templates, the PowerPoint templates, right? The brochures, the um, Facebook signature, uh, your business card, your letterhead, your social media templates, right? Those templates need to be executed. Now, like I said before, the templates won't be clones because they all have different formats. So you have to think about, based on the brand guidelines, how are we executing on these templates? So the next piece of that is what we call, uh, we execute on, so we just said the brand guidelines, the logo, we, we look at the templates and the last thing is the website in within the brand ethos. So how does the website look? Now, the website is really interesting because we do need a few other pillars to execute on the website, but the website is an execution of your brand. So we look at how we're telling your brand story on the website, right? You have to be very strategic about the story you're telling. And then we look at what are the specific things you want to be known for so they're on your website? And then we look into the next pillar, which before I go on to the next pillar, because the next three pillars kind of come together. Once we once the strategy is done, the other three pillars are kind of um, integrated within each other. So remember, the ethos is the brand guidelines, the logo, the templates, and the website. Then we go on to photography. So we need photography to execute on the website. Um, sometimes we need photography, photography to execute also on the templates. So think about how these are going to come to life. So if you really look at the photography is one of the most important things. And some of us have a really hard time to get in front of the camera, but it's really important to show yourself because we want to see the whole you, not just your voice. Remember, we need the five senses, right? We want to see you as an individual and you in front of the camera take on a different personality than somebody else. And that's completely okay. So we have to get really comfortable with ourselves, really know ourselves to then show up in front of the camera. And so that photography is a whole execution on its own. We look at portraits, right? We look at lifestyle photography. We look at content photography and we look at product photography. So there may be certain products that are part of your brand that need to be included in the photography. And the photography would also help us execute on the website. So those two things come together. And then the last pillar is messaging pillar. And that's a really important pillar to have. Why? Because the messaging pillar is what 
I, I kind of look at the messaging pillar as a PR kind of execution, communications, right? So in that pillar, we look at what's your story? What's your brand story? The other thing that we look at is media kit. How do you execute on your personal media kit? We also look at press release. What do you want to be known as and how do we put you out there into the world? And the last thing that we look at there is what are your speaking topics? If you're going to be a speaker, even if you're not going to be a speaker, we need to understand what are the topics you're going to be talking about to individuals, right? And understand how to put that in your tone of voice because your tone of voice is critical, And the only way to get the tone of voice is through your brand character. So once we know your brand character, the tone of voice kind of comes through. And we need all of that because when you execute on the website and you're telling your story, you need to know the tone of voice. That's why all these pieces are important to have and they come together as a whole. And that's why it's called the brand ecosystem. So there we go. Let me go through each of them one more time so we're very clear on what is needed to have a brand ecosystem. So the first one is strategy, vision, mission, values, brand character, brand positioning, and super fan profile. Brand ethos is your brand guidelines, your logo, your templates, and your website. Then we go to photography, which are portraits. They're lifestyle portraits as well. And then we have content photography and we have product photography. And then the last pillar is messaging, which is your brand story, right? Your press release, your media kit, and your topics, your speaking topics. So there we go. That is the brand ecosystem. And once you have all those elements, you're going to have an unstoppable brand, a brand that everybody can recognize, a brand where you can shine in a brand that speaks about who you are. So I hope you like this episode And please write me. You can ask me any questions if you're still unclear on how to create an amazing brand. Thank you so much for being with me here today on The Brand Therapist and see you on the next show. 